Again, we are talking, uh, learning about adding and subtracting whole numbers and decimals. That cover is um, basically these steps that we're going to be following. Sorry about that. All right, so we have been given an equation. 726,421 plus 3,859. In our math books, they tend to they tend to give them to us side by side. You guys need a math on. So maybe that's what you said. Okay? So step one is to line up your numbers by place value. This is where that grid paper that Ms. Hodges keeps up there in that organizer up there comes in very handy. Okay? You want to keep your place values lined up so that you're not adding the wrong numbers in the wrong column. So in this first set, these have been lined up by place value. What is 9 plus 1? 10. 10. So we're going to carry that 1, and we're going to start with the highest number, 4 plus 2? 6. Plus 1? 7. Nothing gets carried. So again, start with your highest number. What is 8 plus 4? 12. Carry your 1. Now the highest number would be 6 and 1, which gives us Nine. Seven. 7. Plus 3 gives us Ten. 10. Carry that 1. 2 plus 1? 3. And then 7 and nothing? 7. Notice even in my addition, we keep our place values lined up and we go ahead and bring our commas straight down. This should be being written down. You don't have time for tapping on one another. Yes, you write this down. That's why we're doing it. So it goes in your journal for a reference. What? Then I think you should have gone and gotten it the second you figured that out. Step two, we added the ones, the tens, and, and um, all the way down. We inserted the commas in the sum. Underline the word sum. Before we go to the practice, let's look at the vocabulary word for adding and subtracting. What do you think would be a good definition for the word sum? Adding. That's not a definition, that's a word. The answer. The answer is two words, but not a definition. For what kind of problem? Very good. So the sum is the number. We get when adding two or more add ins. And again, underline that word add ins because that is another vocabulary terminology. We have it posted on the uh, word wall over here for addition, but we've never really discussed it. So if you look over here at addition, 
We have sum, which is the result of adding the total. Addend, which is a number that is being added. So the two numbers that are being added are called the addends. Or add-ins. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I can't see it. Okay, then you need to move where you can, remember? We're not ever stuck in the seat we're sitting in. We can always move closer to the screen. There's yoga mats, there's lap trays, there's foot boards. By this time of the year, I don't have to tell you that if you can't see, you need to find a way to move closer. But if you're going to be on the floor shoulder to shoulder, you need to have your mask or gator on. Okay? What is the difference? What is the difference, Jesse? The uh, answer of the subtraction. Very good. The number when we, we get, right? When we subtract one number from another. So the difference is the number we get when we subtract one number from another. I'm trying to make that a little bit larger for you. So after you get that definition written, I want you to write out the practice lining up your place value. And go ahead and work through that, starting with your ones, then moving to your tens, then moving to your hundreds, all the way like you would normally add a number. Once you have finished adding those up, thumbs up, please.
Okay, let's add these up. Seven and one. Eight. Anything to carry? No. Three and three? Six. Nothing to carry. Four and zero? Four. This is where you go ahead and insert your comma. Seven and two? Six and two? Eight. Eight. Then four has nothing to add and a comma to insert and a three. Yes. Yes. Thumbs up if you got that one right. Awesome job. Great job. And again, as long as we're lining them up by place value, whether we use a grid paper or we just write nice and neat and focused, the addition is not very difficult. Go ahead and flip the page. All right, on subtracting, we're gonna do the same thing. We're always gonna line them up by place value. And if we need to borrow, we're going to borrow, right? So when you work on a subtraction problem, it's always the number on top minus the number on bottom. Some people try to flip it and do it the other way around so they don't have to regroup or borrow. But we've got to borrow, got to, got to. If it's, too, if it's too large of a number. So can I take five away from two? No. 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 So I'm going to go next door, and I'm going to borrow a 10, right? Mm -hmm. So this number a 12. becomes a six, and, then two and this two. number becomes a 12, right? Mm -hmm. So if I start at five and I count up to 12, how many do I have? Seven. Can I take seven away from six? No. 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 But you have to carry, carry um, one from the five, and you can add it to the seven, so the seven, or, the, or add it to that six, so that six goes back to seven, and then seven minus seven is going to be. Okay, so we're going to read, we're going to go next door and borrow. From the hundreds, we're going to take 10 away and give that 4. And our 10 is going to come over here to our 6 and become 16. So now I start at 7, and I count up to 16, and I get what? 9. Nine. Very good. Can I take 3 away from 4? Yes. What am I left with? 1. You don't need to shout at me. And then six has nothing being taken away from it, so we're going to just bring down our six. All right, this next one is a little bit more tricky. You are subtracting with a lot of zeros. There's too much talking. So it says to give one of the tens to the ones, and we're going to consider that as five, think of 5,000 as 500 tens. So after giving one ten to the ones, it looks like this. 4,997 plus 10, right? So we are going to give, we're going to take 500 tens and we're going to change it to 400 or 4,990 with a 10 attached to the 7 so that we can just subtract straight across. Okay, so if I start at 9, what's left over to get to 17? Uh, eight. 8. Can I take 9 away from 9? Yes. What do I get? Zero. 
Can I take one away from nine? Yes. yes. Eight. 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 And then and then the 4 doesn't have anything subtracted from it, so I just bring it on down. Uh, yep. Thumbs up when you're ready. Ladies, I'm going to have to split you up if every time I look over, you're chit-chatting. All right, let's go back to the um, next side of the page, and this is adding and subtracting decimals. Same concept. We're still lining both up by their place value, but that decimal is key. The decimal cannot go away just because you are adding and subtracting numbers, okay? That decimal is just as important in the product as it is, I mean, in the uh, sum as it is in the um, difference, okay? So step one, line up the decimals. Step two, add from left to right. I mean, right to left. I don't know why that I said that. Because fifth grade's doing something left or right. All right, so they forgot the addition sign in this example. So go ahead and add that in. I always like to bring my decimal down so I don't forget about it as an end result of my problem. Your decimal place doesn't move. It just comes straight down. Okay? Can I take four away from two? No. No, so I'm going to go next door and I'm going to borrow 10 to make this 12. Now if I start at 4 and I count up to 12, what's the difference? How about 5 being subtracted from 5? Can I take 6 away from 1? Oh, goodness, y'all. I'm, I'm subtracting, and we should be adding. Oh! Yeah. Go ahead and erase. Oh, Sorry. I didn't even write. That's good. Not really, but good. All right, Miss Hodges has to start over. Still in the subtraction mode. So all my little notes are going to have to be ignored here. Let's try that again. What's 2 plus 4? 6, 6, six plus 5 equals 12. 12. So oh, 11. Guys? Yeah. 6 plus 5 equals 11. Equals 11. Equals 11. So we're going to carry a 1. And 6 plus 2 equals eight. is 8. And 3 plus 3 equals six. is 6. Notice that decimal place never moved. It comes straight down. The same is true for subtracting decimals. Okay? So if you have the room, let's flip this problem and let's make it a subtraction problem. I'm going to go ahead and do it here, because I know I can do it. I'm going to say 36 and 54 hundredths minus 31 and 62 hundredths. Again, go ahead and bring down your decimal so it's not forgotten in your answer. Bless you. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up when you're ready, start subtracting. Okay. Can I take two away from four? Yes. How much is it? Two. two. Can I take six away from five? No. What am I doing? 
borrow. Borrow next door, right? And then the six Start at six and count up to 15 and I get? Five. How about five and subtract one? Four more. Okay. And of course, three minus three is zero, so we don't have to write that down. So our result, or the difference, is four and 92 hundredths.